I'm so tired of people playing God and just running around here taking people's lives. Like, it's, it's sickening. He was uh, tied to this metal chair. This chair was overturned. Yeah, he was tortured and, I mean, he was real bad. I wouldn't want to see that done to my worst enemy. That's the one thing that gets me about this case in general, is this guy ran terrified to his death and end up getting executed on a front porch. It's one of the most brutal murders that I've seen. Taj had four bullet holes in the back of his head. That's a vicious act. It was very personal. He was beat. You got him naked. Tied to a chair. If you live right across the street, I'm sure you, can, you could have seen his body. Somebody on that street saw something. If you have gunshots going off in the neighborhood, somebody's going to look. These questions could be answered if they will get into his Facebook. Two days after he was murdered, his Facebook was deactivated. He may have chatted with his killer. And then that chair is still on the porch. As an evidence collector of forensics, you would think they would take the chair with them. I've heard from multiple people that he's a wonderful father. He was a wonderful father. And it's sad that my grandson only got two years with his father, because he was, he was a good father. He just said he wanted to be there for his son. He wanted to be a good father. There's no reason that he should have been done like that. I'm on scene saying that he, he, I'm pretty sure he's dead. We're gonna need MCU for this. So Taj was last seen May 2nd of 2018. It's around two or three in the afternoon. And Taj's girlfriend saw him leave the house, the home that they shared on McKenzie Street. Around six or seven o'clock at night, several gunshots were heard. Taj's body was found on a porch uh, the next morning around 8.30. Sheree, first I want you to take me back to the day you learned of your son's passing. That whole entire day, I felt sick to my stomach. And then the detectives called about 3.45 and asked me, was he my son? And then they said to wait that they were gonna, they needed to come and speak to me. And then they came to my job and sat me in a room and showed me a picture on the phone and asked me, was that my son? What was the picture of? Was it him on that front porch? Yes. We start with breaking news out of Petersburg, where police have just released the name of the city's latest homicide victim. Crime insider sources say it was 22-year-old Tajmir Hopkins, who was found naked on the front porch of a home by a neighbor. And we are told that he had been shot multiple times and was bound, beaten, and gagged. Or had literature, some type of literature, white sheet or rag or some type. I don't know how it was around his neck. It's been four years. Nobody has said anything, even after you heard gunshots. When you know it's in the clear, at least you come outside and you look around to see, you know. So for you to just not come outside at all and look around and... Because you can... If you live right across the street, I'm sure you, can, you could have seen his body. So I don't understand how nobody saw nothing. I just I don't understand that. And then that chair is still on the porch. And I don't understand that either. Out of all of his injuries, which one stuck out to say this was personal? Because it, it was very personal. The fact that they tied him up, the fact that you, you got him tied around the neck, like you up close, you, you got him naked. The way that his wounds were, they're very close, personal wounds to his face. He was shot four times in the head, according to the autopsy. He was bound, he was gagged. He was bloody, um, face was swollen. It appears that uh, a message was, was trying to be sent, yes. He suffered. We were able to get documents from the courts in Chesterfield County, and it did show some sort of a beef between Taj and a man that was known to the family. So this is the last complaint that Taj Mir had against That's your son's handwriting, right? Mm-hmm. He just was evil. I, I'm not, listen, if I was to find out that he was the one who did something to my son, I wouldn't be surprised.
what we're doing here, what do you hope comes about? They need to get on their job. They need to get into his Facebook. Two days after he was murdered, his Facebook was shut down. It was deactivated. They could find out who he met up with, who he was talking now, to. Can you get in with a search warrant? They said they can't get into it. Here's where mom believes Taj was before he was supposed to go play basketball. Uh, Taj was with the girlfriend and then he went to a friend's house. So he messaged her from Facebook and said that he was at some boy's house and it was a couple of guys there and it didn't seem right. So he was supposed to have left from there and was going to VSU to play basketball. As far as you know, what have you guys been able to determine where Mr. Hopkins was prior to this location? Uh, through the course of our investigation, we found out that Mr. Hopkins went to Virginia State University on campus and played basketball with some folks, uh, friends of his. After he finished his game, his whereabouts became unknown. Did he walk back here or did someone drop him off? I don't have any information on his method of travel at a particular time. You've been in law enforcement a long time. 32 you know years. You know your stuff. Travis Christian is the new chief of police down there, so there's a lot of changes. Uh, Kenneth Miller was the chief at the time. Uh, Travis was a deputy chief. He is now chief, and he has reassigned other detectives to this case now. The way that he was killed, I, and it was a large crime scene, if I remember, because I remember the day I went to the house, uh, where he was almost running a block down the street. Correct. So folks along that street had to have heard it, had to have seen something. You know, one thing I, I, I do know about uh, in, in law enforcement, as you said, people see things, people hear things. If you have gunshots going off in the neighborhood, somebody's gonna be paying attention. Somebody's gonna look. About six, seven shots, man, about right before it dark, or may have been dark. I didn't pay attention, but I paid attention to those shots. That scene was not just isolated to that porch. That was a, that was a scene that stretched a block or so and then ended on a porch. So that we, we're confident that someone knew something, seen something, heard something. But as always, the challenge is getting folks to come forward and share that information. And this is one thing that mom brought up. She feels like the answer is on Facebook. She says that that's the way he communicated. He communicated through Facebook Messenger. She believes that he may have chatted with his killer. What have you instructed your guys to do as far as weeks to months to heat this thing up? Well, um, putting another detective on it, um, one, we're, we're going to re-examine again all the evidence that was collected. He was uh, tied to this metal chair. This chair was overturned here on the porch and he was laying here. The chair is still on the porch. And I don't understand because I'm sure it's evidence on that. She doesn't believe detectives took all the evidence they could have. For instance, that chair is still there. Like it wasn't picked up. The evidence wasn't picked up. And she said there could have been fingerprints or something on that. And you know how scenes are processed. Normally everything that's around the body is taken. Why do you think they left such a, a high profile thing like this, for instance, the chair? Well, I'm not aware of the, all the evidence uh, that was collected from the scene. I do know that there was a lot of evidence taken. Um, go back and canvas the area. Go back and canvas the area, not only for additional evidence, but for additional people that may have been around or heard something. And hopefully we can kind of uh, turn over a stone that someone, someone may have missed. I've known Travis Christian, the chief of police in, in Petersburg for more than 20 years. And I think that he will do his due diligence to make sure we get a rap on this thing and, and somebody gets arrested. Um, but it, again, it all comes down to the folks out there that were, that were close to Taj, the people that live on that street, what are they willing to tell to make this thing open up and, and thaw out? That's the big question because there are people on that street, St. Matthews, that have the answers. How deep does this go? Because people, for people to be that scared, to me, it has to be deeper than that. I just don't feel like he has peace. It's like this thing happened to him and it's, it's not solved. Like I know what's happening to y'all family. Somebody need to start talking. That's the only way things, things are gonna get solved if people are speaking. I know the rules, snitches get stitches and all that stuff, but it's getting crazy. We have to stop it.